The city of London boasted a population of around 60,000 people living along narrow, cobblestone streets or muddy lanes and breathing smoky air from a sea of chimneys when Edmund Spencer was born in 1552, near the fabled Tower of London. Spencer's father may have been a tradesman, who was descended from the Dispenser family of Lancashire, and his mother's name was Elizabeth, as he tells us in Sonnet 74. Most of the citizens were illiterate and had little understanding of the political establishment that ruled over them or the diseases that threatened their lives. But Edmund was able to enroll at the Merchant Tailor's School through the contributions of a wealthy country gentleman. His education would have been grounded in Latin grammar and classical authors along with some lessons in the Greek tongue. Yet the headmaster, Richard Mulcaster, was forward-thinking for his time and wished to promote the English language and English authors, too. Mulcaster also encouraged the study of nature by taking field trips in addition to the study of books. Once Spencer reached his 17th year, he moved on to Pembroke Hall of Cambridge University, where he studied for seven years, from 1569 to 1576, earning a BA and MA. Spencer was a scissor, a poor student who did chores for other students in order to pay his expenses. In this era, the university was an all-male community housed in a cloister-like setting with a gatehouse, chapel, dormitory, and other buildings forming a rectangle around the college green. Many students studied religion to prepare for a career as a pastor, while sons of the ruling class might pursue philosophy and law to prepare for a career in government. Since Latin was the international language and the language of learned men, all students were required to be able to read and write it. 16- and 17-year-old students were common, but some even younger were enrolled. The drafty buildings forced students and masters to don the long, hooded robes that are seen today only at commencement ceremonies. Although students of Pembroke Hall were adjured not to drink or visit brothels, many students did become drunk at social gatherings or local taverns, occasionally resulting in Donnybrooks with townspeople. During the poet's years at Cambridge, Liberal social movements and free-thinking religious movements attracted a number of the students to the worried concern of the administration. At the university, Spencer formed friendships that would allow him to rise to much higher social circles. One friend was Lancelot Andrews, who later became Bishop of Winchester, and another was Edward Kirk, who may have been the E.K. who edited The Shepherd's Calendar, Spencer's first great poem. A third friend, Gabriel Harvey, was able to introduce Spencer to the famous Sir Philip Sidney, poet, soldier, and a favorite of the Queen. Spencer and Sidney both had brilliant minds, a gift for composing verse, and a thorough education, traits that led them to become good friends. Spencer, now one of the best educated men in the kingdom, left Cambridge at age 24 and may have lived in Lancashire for a year where he was smitten by a beautiful young lady who did not return his affection and thus served as the original model for the character, Rosaline, in The Shepherd's Calendar, which was published in 1579. Aubrey describes Spencer, based on information from Mr. Beeston, as having been a little man with short hair and a little beard. The year 1578 saw the young poet employed as secretary to the Bishop of Rochester, John Young, who had earlier served as master of Pembroke Hall. Since private schools and colleges in past centuries tried to mold sound moral character in their young charges, a clergyman was seen as a fitting role model to serve as headmaster of a school or master of a college. Then, too, religious studies were naturally an important part of one's education. Yet higher employment beckoned the bright, eager man. After visiting Sir Philip Sidney again at Sidney's house, Pinshurst, the two went to London where Sidney introduced Spencer to the Earl of Leicester who happened to be Sidney's great-uncle. That is how by the autumn of 1579, Spencer came to be employed by Leicester. On October 27th, he married Maccabeus' child at Westminster, and eventually they had a son named Sylvanus and a daughter Catherine. In December of 1579, the Shepherd's Calendar was published. The poem was dedicated to Sidney and is divided into twelve pastoral poems and instantly made Spencer the toast of the town. However, he also composed Mother Hubbard's Tale, a political satire presented as a beast fable in the style of Chaucer. In depicting the conniving and greeting nature of some courtiers, the poet antagonized Lord Burghley, William Cecil, who may have seen himself as the model for the fox, 
and thus hurt Spencer's own chances for advancement in Elizabeth's court. In order to take the next leap forward, the poet had to leave his native land. In the summer of 1580, he was appointed private secretary to Lord Grey, the Lord Deputy of Ireland, and therefore traveled to Ireland with Grey. Spencer served as clerk of the Privy Council at Dublin Castle. He remained in Ireland for the rest of his life, save for a few trips to London. By March of 1581, Spencer was employed as clerk of the Chancery for faculties. Moreover, two years later, he was appointed Commissioner of Musters for County Kildare. As a reward for his service to the English government, he was assigned 3,000 acres in 1586, along with Kilcolman Castle in County Cork, which had been seized from Gerald Fitzgerald, the 15th Earl of Desmond, who spent many years warring with other Irish clans and defying the English government. Spencer's sister Sarah traveled with him to Ireland and married into the Travers family of County Cork. A tragic moment for the English nobility occurred when the valorous Sir Philip Sidney was killed at the Battle of Zutphen in 1586, causing Spencer, who always felt grateful to him, to compose one of the finest pastoral elegies, a strophel, in his memory. While in Ireland, Spencer met the renowned Sir Walter Raleigh, who had also been granted land in County Cork, and the two became fast friends. During one visit from Raleigh, Spencer read the first books of the Fairy Queen to his guest as they sat under the trees beside the River Mola. Being a poet and a gentleman of culture himself, Raleigh recognized at once the genius and beauty of Spencer's epic and proposed that the two of them sail to London to present the work to the Queen. Spencer agreed and, through Raleigh's influence, was introduced to Queen Elizabeth in October of 1589 and read his first three books to her. The queen was so pleased with the work, which flattered her in the character of Gloriana, queen of the fairies, that she granted Spencer a pension of 50 pounds a year, a generous allowance for the period. In January of 1590, the first three books of the fairy queen, dedicated to Queen Elizabeth, were published by William Ponsonby in London and received much praise. The most reader-friendly edition of the fairy queen, book one, is the modern spelling edition edited by David W. Barry. The digital version is available at the Apple Store, and the paperback edition is available from Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Schools and bookstores can buy it from Ingram Spark. The editor can be reached at redbud1971 at gmail.com. In 1591, he published the satirical Mother Hubbard's Tale, which he had composed around 1578 and which mocked politicians including Lord Burghley, William Cecil. Due to that offense, he had to return to Ireland. The poet was appointed the Queen's Justice for Cork in 1594, and on June 11th of that year, he married Elizabeth Boyle, the sister of the Earl of Cork. Also in November, Amoretti, a sonnet sequence relating the long courtship of Elizabeth, his wife, and Epithalamion, a passionate wedding ode, were entered in the stationer's register. Soon the couple produced a boy and named him Peregrine. 1595 was an exceptional year for Spencer as he saw several works published. Colin Cloud's Come Home Again was published alongside with Estrafel, a pastoral elegy upon the death of the most noble and valorous knight, Sir Philip Sidney. Books 4 through Book 6 of The Fairy Queen were published for the first time in 1596, in a volume that reprinted books 1 through 3. An ominous note was struck by King James of Scotland, who claimed that Spencer had slandered his mother, Mary Queen of Scots, in the character of Duessa. James was next in the line of succession to the English throne, and defending a future king of England was a dangerous move. However, it was impossible to praise Queen Elizabeth without criticizing Mary, who was her rival for the throne. In the same year, he published Prothalamion, an ode celebrating the marriage of Lord Worcester's daughters. A pamphlet called A View of the Present State of Ireland, Spencer completed in 1596, but it was not published during his lifetime. It argued that the rebellious nature of the Irish people would never be quelled until the Irish language and customs were obliterated. Spencer was named sheriff-designate for County Cork in 1598, but in October, Kilcolman Castle was attacked and burned by followers of the Earl of Tyrone. The poet and his family barely escaped with their lives, perhaps fleeing through an underground tunnel from the basement. Spencer arrived in London on Christmas Eve to present dispatches from the governor of Munster to the Privy Council. 
Just three weeks later, on January 13, 1599, Spencer died at a tavern on King Street in Westminster and was buried according to his wishes in Westminster Abbey, next to the monument for Chaucer, thus establishing the poet's corner in that venerable abbey. His coffin was carried by a host of poets who threw pages of poetry and quill pens into the grave. The Earl of Essex paid the funeral expenses.